Um, my name is Scott McBride. I'm the project manager with the Boatman Mink team, and I'll, I'll introduce our other two presenters here. Um, Nick Fisher, could you say hello to folks? Hello, I'm Nick uh, with Ramsey County. Uh, Nick will be on in just a minute. And then uh, Hyla Mays with Boltman Mink is our other presenter. You want to say hi, Hyla? Hello, everyone. I'm glad to see you here today. Thank you. Um, so we're here to, to, to have the uh, fifth of five uh, open houses on the concept development phase of this project. And so the purpose of tonight's um, meeting is to, to go through a project overview. We'll, we'll catch you up on what we've been doing lately. We want to catch you up on what we've been hearing from the community as we've been talking throughout this whole process. And then we want to want to uh, show you the recommended design that we have come up with for this process. And then importantly, is there still an echo? Um, could you could you please check your your mutes and make sure that everybody is muted on here? Is there still an echo? Sound OK? I don't I'm hear not one. getting one here. No. Nope. Okay, thanks, Nicole. <clears throat> so uh, importantly, what we want to talk about is, is what happens next as well. There's a little bit of unknown with that as, as design kicks off, but we'll answer questions as we can today. And, and we want to get your input on what's important to you in these next couple of phases that, that we'll talk about. Um, as uh, Nicole noted early, we will have a uh, breakout session in here also so that we can break up into a little bit smaller groups and have some conversation. So please stay on mute during the presentation. We do have a chat box going and, and members of our team will, will monitor that chat, chat box. If, if we have questions we can answer in real time in the chat, we will do that. Um, so fee, please feel free to, to, to uh, use the chat box for questions. If, if you have a question and can't wait, feel free to raise your hand. Although, as I mentioned, we will be going to a breakout room with staff into breakout rooms and, and we intend to have some targeted conversations um, in those breakout. So if you can wait until then, that, that would be that would be preferred. So I'm going to hand it off to Nick here and we'll just have a couple of slides on, on an overview of, of what it is that we're doing here. So go ahead, Nick. All right. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Nick again from Ramsey County. And you can kind of see uh, on the map on the right there, uh, we're talking about Rice Street tonight between Pennsylvania Avenue and Wheelock Parkway. So why are we here? What's going on? Um, if you've driven Rice Street lately, you know the pavement's kind of at the end of its useful life. So it's time to get reconstructed. And uh, the question is, how are we gonna do that? Um, so we kind of want to change it from car-centric to more of a people-centric corridor. And that's what we've been working on the last uh, year, year or two here. And uh, with the people, we want to figure out who's there and how can we uh, make this road serve them better. Um, so if you see on our, our left side here, who's, the, who's using the road? It's a diverse use of residents, users, businesses, and modes of travel. So you're including people that walk, people that bike, people that use transit. So all everyone has to be accounted for in our, in our new Rice Street that we're designing. Uh, we have other goals uh, along with this is safety and traffic, community development, business vitality, bike and pedestrian conditions, not only north, south along Rice Street, but also crossing Rice Street as well, uh, public safety and livability concern. So our goals are develop a whole plan for the whole corridor. Uh, next slide. And we have a lot of other goals, uh, public safety, improve bicycle safety, promote community investment, promote health, a healthy community, uh, maintain transit service and even make it better. Uh, provide business support, enhance pedestrian safety is a big one, uh, create a environment, promote economic development, uh, workforce development, and improve vehicle safety. So next slide. So here's kind of our schedule of what we've been doing and where we're going. Uh, we've, we're finishing up our engagement on our preliminary design pretty much tonight. And then uh, after this, we're going to go into final design and implementation of the, the plan we're talking about tonight. And then I think next slide here, we'll pass it off to Hyla and she'll talk about what we heard and engagement. Thanks, Nick. Um, 
we have a had a lot of engagement over the past couple of years, and we're going to have a really quick summary of some of the uh, work that's been done in terms of the, the major themes and and so the different activities. Um, there's a lot more to where, where this comes from. So those who are interested, please do make sure to check out our project website. I just say as a preface because I always feel that we're just beginning to touch the topic and we when we cover it in this in this forum. But as many of you have been traveling with us, you know that this has been a core part of our project. Um, the focus of our strategy really has been to work with the community. Um, making sure that people in the community are are part of the process, that we have individuals who who know what it's like to be here and, and who are invested in this area, investing in community institutions, um, the, the agencies, businesses, and those in the corridor that are, are impacted and um, will be here long after this project is over with, um, our important partners, building relationships and capacity. Um, this project is no, far from over, and you'll hear about that later from Scott, um, making sure there's capacity for the community to continue to learn and hear and participate and speak on their behalf. And again, thinking about long-term, not just a project, but a community that um, needs investment and um, people to care about it and work in it and live in it um, for years to come. The phases you see here are kind of the top four, I would say the four areas and phases of our engagement process. Um, the first one really focused on understanding what things are like out there right now. Um, potential roadway designs with a lot of different sort of unpacked toolbox, especially during COVID, to sort of think about all the different ways um, we can improve the road and help people understand the full range of options as we're building the right solution here. Um, narrowing it down to the top three um, designs last year that sort of came out of the conversations with the community of what was most important. And again, now through um, with the recommended design near the end of last year and now with sort of a rollout of a refined version of it now. So that's that's kind of the stages we've been through here. Each of these has been a feedback loop with the community to understand what's important um, and how do we um, ensure that we're addressing the top community needs as part of the process. Next slide. Um, this is a very high level summary of, of the many different pieces of the engagement process of, of what we heard and learned during this. Um, there was a, a lot of activity, and I won't read all the numbers you see on the screen, but you get a sense of the variety of different types of engagement. Of course, during COVID, nothing went like we thought it would. In terms of the planning, we had our ideas, and then they got, got upended through the process. Um, but because we had some good creative people involved, um, we were able to think of different solutions in terms of engaging. Um, the numbers here show that there was a lot of different ways people could have touches in the process. Not that every single person was engaged, but we like to think that people had multiple opportunities and that the voices we heard were authentic and diverse from the community. Thank you for everyone who participated today tonight. As I said, mentioned earlier, the summary of a lot of this information is available on our website in the engagement section um, and, is, and will be also part of the reporting out of this stage to make the direct connection. Um, we, we heard there's a lot of common themes that came out of this engagement, um, especially related to pedestrian safety and accessibility, the livability and vitality of the corridor, and about making sure that there's good modal options that work well together. Those themes were heard over and over again. And rather than have them in the engagement section, you'll see them in the design section because we're showing how our design at this point is responsive to that. Next slide. Um, the community liaisons, I do think I saw Melvin's picture flash up earlier, so we may have at least one on, on the call today. Um, the the um, liaisons were our, through Forecast Public Art, and also I should mention our partner Formula, who's been actively involved as well on the engagement side, helped us to sort of refine our approach and really um, work on um, identifying and recruiting for wonderful people who live in the community, who are gifted artists, um, and also concerned community members who are part of our partnership. Um, they did a whole range of exercises and activities, um, starting from thinking about how you would approach this in a more um, people-friendly way and not just a technical, competent way. Um, and then instead sort of pivoting during COVID to think about how we do that in a way that's safe and honoring of the health and well-being of the community along the corridor. We've had in-person and um, distance engagement, but the, the whole approach has been sort of um, developed through the, through the community process, which respects how poor people are right now and thinks differently about making this approachable. Infrastructure isn't always someone's favorite thing, but this is a chance to help people see how this is part of their life. I have list, listed up here some of the activities they had. This really doesn't even begin to capture all the pieces here, um, but just to think about, they developed a wonderful activity book that can get, engage all ages in understanding this corridor in a fun and interactive way. 
um, community partnerships with institutions, with businesses, with individuals in the community who care and are invested in different ways. Focus group discussions with groups that um, might probably would not have been reached any other way um, to really listen to them deeply. Uh, Pop-up engagement activities. You see some pictures here of some safe social distance engagement from the past year or two. And next up is a cookbook for community. And I saw a sneak preview of this just a couple hours ago. It is cool. Uh, many of our community leaders um, and, and, and agencies and people in this community have um, provided recipes using rice as an ingredient, and they have turned it into something amazing. It's it'll be I, that's I know just to tease it to not share it here, but we will be rolling that out. And many thanks to our artists who worked on that to make something. They said, you know what? We want to report that people want to keep for a while, not just read it and put it aside, but maybe they'll use it for cooking dinner. So these are these are not just fun ideas. They're ideas with a purpose and ideas to get us in a deeper community relationship than we would be otherwise. And we really do think it's made a huge difference in terms of understanding what's important here. And as you'll see later, to build out an implementation strategy that's well beyond the road. Next slide. Um, next, what's next? I'm going to talk briefly and then turn it over to Scott to talk about design and implementation plan. Um, you'll see here some different handouts, um, versions of the handout. If, if you're not uh, a native in any of these languages, I can tell you that in English, um, this is an overview of where we are right now, of the concept that's been developed for Rice Street in terms of the roadway concept you're about to hear about. We're creating multilingual content and doing it in a simple and accessible way so that at this point we can sort of document and memorialize what this product, where we are now, all the feedback and the important themes that got to this point, and sort of how this is this is going to achieve um, broader goals. We're at a pivot point now, you'll hear about now, but the idea is we're going to draw this together and have some reporting out to the community, including some multimedia and video you see, you'll see later, um, to make sure that people understand where we are and are, can continue to track with us through the process. I will pause now and, and turn it over to Scott to talk about the design. Yeah, thanks, Hila. Um, Hila just gave us a, an update that took about, you know, five, six, seven minutes over, over this engagement process, with, when actually we've been at this for a long time, talking to the community. And we started out um, in summer of 2019, before the great pandemic of 2020. And that's, that's when we started going out to the community with the sole purpose of asking, what is your vision for Rice Street? So we spent a lot of time at that. And you can go to the next slide. Um, what we heard, this is, these are goals that we established at the very beginning of that process. So uh, I'd like to say that on the left side, we have kind of what I'll call our, our normal transportation goals. These fit with the, the counties. Um, all abilities plan. It fits with the city's plan to establish safe pedestrian accommodations, safe bicycle accommodations, improved transit service, safe traffic operations, and a welcoming streetscape. So those are, the, again, the normal transportation goals for this project. On the right side, though, is something we, we've done a little bit differently in this uh, and very deliberately, very thoughtfully. Um, we asked the community what's important to them along Rice Street. And we, we came up with things like supporting business, economic development, um, jobs, workforce development, employment along the corridor, just being healthy, um, the simple act of being healthy. Public safety is an issue too, you know, not just crashes in the street, but being safe along the street. And some other community defined goals. So behind these goals and criteria, We've got a fairly massive spreadsheet about how do you measure these things. And so this went into the, the decision-making process. And you can go to the next slide, Nicole. <clears throat> so I mentioned earlier, we, we've been at this for a long time, and, and Hila went through a little bit of this as well. So what we did is we took those goals. We looked at kind of the universe of possible alternatives we might have out here, and we reduced that to seven concepts. We took those out to the public and got feedback on those. Based on that feedback, we further reduced it down to, to three uh, favored concepts. We took those back out to the public last summer. And so since then, um, we've, we've been developing, based on the comments we received from the community, based on technical analysis as well, we came up with a recommended design 
for, uh, for Rice Street. And next slide, just as a quick reminder, you, you, you don't need to spend much time on this, but, but um, you all know what Rice Street is like. This is the existing, this is the existing roadway. It's currently four lanes of traffic in each direction. The outside lane in both directions becomes a parking lane in certain locations at certain times. Tends to, tends to lead to a little confusion. <clears throat> and it has six foot sidewalks on either side of it. And so as we did much of our technical work, one thing we, uh, we came up with, mainly from a safety standpoint, is that this four lane option is not considered to be viable into the future. And so that led us to looking at, at different alternatives. And so if you go to the next slide, what we came up with and what we are recommending um, and looking for your input on is this concept. It's a shared use path, three lane roadway. So it is starting at the middle, I'll go in the middle and go out. Um, three lane roadway be one lane in each direction with a two way left turn lane. As you know, one of the one of the main concerns we heard is the the uh, lack of left turn lanes out here and, and the safety um, issues that that causes. On the left side or the west side of Rice Street, we would install a 12 foot shared use path that's suitable for bicycles and pedestrians at the same time. And on the right side, the far right side or the east side, we have a, we maintain that six foot sidewalk, and between that sidewalk and the shared use use path and the curb line is a six foot boulevard. And, and we're calling that kind of a flexible space, which would allow um, the kind of the normal use of, you see here, street lights, uh, be able to put signs in that area. In some cases, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, we'll be able to put parking lanes in this. So at this point, we're not showing a parking lane here, but there is opportunity to, to install some parking lanes. And again, I'll, I'll touch on that here in a little bit. So that's the recommended concept that, that we have developed. Um, and if you go to the next slide, I want to go through a few visuals to because you know a, a, a typical section is, is perhaps good for an engineer to visualize that, but but many of us need different visuals. And so this is a this is a perspective shown from uh, the street view um, looking north on Rice Street at Ivy. And if you hit the next one, this is what we anticipate that it will start to look like. So again, this is in the street. Along the left side there, you see the, the 12 foot shared use path. Um, we haven't yet determined the, the surface, whether that would be bituminous or concrete. Um, that, that will come a little later in the design process. In the middle, this is showing uh, the possibility of a uh, pedestrian refuge median island that would separate traffic where there's, where there's no need for left turns um, we can have a, uh, call it a two-stage pedestrian crossing that would allow people to look one way, take refuge in the median, and be able to look the other way and, and safely cross the street. Um, we're showing just ideas for that flexible space between the curb line and the sidewalk on the east side and the, the shared use path on the west side. These are just ideas where there are homes, perhaps grass wants to go in there, where there are businesses, perhaps um, a hard surface would want to go in there for, for flexibility. So that's at Ivy and Rice. And we've got a couple more of these. Go to the next one. <clears throat> so we'll show you this one. This is at Montana. Um, if you're familiar with the street, AutoZone and McDonald's are, are at this location. Go ahead and flip it over. Again, there's a, you can see the left turn in the southbound direction there. Um, since there is no street to the west side, we've, we've shown a pedestrian refuge median there. Um, shared use path, and this shows on the on the left side there. This shows an actual hard surface and what that could potentially look like for the future. Um, the possibility of putting benches or or other types of things that that uh, might be uh, pedestrian amenities there. And the next slide. This is at Lawson Avenue, and, and you'll recall um, Lawson is. Perhaps you'll recall Lawson is the uh, location of a potential future uh, North End Recreation Center. And if you show that next slide, then we just blocked that out in white. That's a North End Community Center. And we don't know exactly what the pedestrian treatments will be here, but we are going to look at this 
much, much closer because we anticipate this to be a, a huge uh, generator of foot traffic, bike traffic. Um, so there'll be some special treatment of this. And this shows left turn lanes in both, both directions. That's an example of that. In the next slide. One more at Winnipeg. Um, this is toward the south end of the, the corridor. Go ahead. So this is a little more commercial area and uh, probably calls for a little more hardscape surface rather than uh, than uh, than grass in the in those flexible zones. This shows the trees that are there today. So those those trees have been planted and those are existing trees. So it's, it's got room for for tree planters in there. And it's a little tough to see, but in the front of that red car in the front, you can see a, a turn bay cut into the, the right side there. And so there's a, there's a car parked over on the right side. So that's an example of how turn bays can be cut into that, that flexible zone. And the next one. <clears throat> um, so why did we select this particular one? Um, at the very beginning, I talked about the, the various criteria, the goals and objectives we had for this project. This, this one best met um, in, in large part those, those goals and objectives. So on the, on the kind of city county agency side of things, it, it really supported the county's commitment to that all abilities transportation network, um, allowing foot traffic, bicycle focused use of that space, very, con city, very consistent with the city and the county's complete street policies and, and plans. Um, and from a little more technical side, it's got more ability to accommodate snow storage there as well, um, among other things. It's, it's got a little bit more flexibility in that, in that flex zone. On the community side, it's got uh, more space for trees, plants, benches. That, that's to come in the next part of the, in the next phase of this. But it's got more space to, to actually make the, the place a little more vibrant, a little more safe. Um, a place that people want to be. Um, it adds an important link to the city's bicycle network that is not there today. We heard continually about the, uh, the inability to bike safely along Rice Street. Very few people did it because it didn't feel safe. Um, this allows that network to, uh, to have another connection. Um, it separates bikes from cars, as I was just talking about, higher safety, higher comfort level. And we anticipate that this will really reduce the, uh, the proliferance we have out there today of, of pedestrian, bicycle, and car crashes that are there. And then the, lastly, um, you've probably heard about uh, Metro Transit's planned B line, or excuse me, G line, um, ABRT project, bus rapid transit project. Um, I'll touch on that in just a minute. Um, that is a, uh, an important feature of this. Next one, um, we've, we wanted to focus in on a, on a few areas out here because um, one of the issues with Rice Street is, and I'm sure you're very familiar with this, this is at Cook Avenue, it, it shows two offset streets. That happens frequently along here. There are a lot of access points that don't line up. So we actually look for opportunities and the other one of the other defining features of Rice Street here is Yep. Thank you. One of the other defining features of, of Rice Street is that on the east side, for a large part of it, um, it's only two blocks long where it goes into a park, where it goes into the, uh, the cemetery. And so um, we looked at the opportunity to perhaps increase the safety, increase the pedestrian safety by looking at some partial closer, closures. And by that, we mean in, in this case, you see a median going up down the middle of, of Rice Street across Cook. So you would not be able to turn left into Cook from the, the northbound direction, or if you're on Cook, you would not be able to turn left into the northbound direction there. And that is to, that is to try to uh, kind of clean up some of that access and make it a little more intuitive, a little safer for people to drive. So you see the locations where, where we're proposing that, Winnipeg, Hatch, Cook, Rose and Ivy. And then some of these uh, uh, left turns are, are really low volume. And so we looked at opportunities to try to limit some of those, again, to, to reduce conflicts between cars and cars and conflicts between cars and pedestrians or bicycles as well. So uh, more will come on those and more community conversations will, will come around those as well. And the next slide. 
did want to just touch on the the, the ABRT. Um, Metro Transit has been a part of this team um, since its beginning. They've been a, a big part of this. We are a little bit out front of their process. Um, at this time, Metro Transit anticipates the uh, Robert Rice line or the, the G line to be constructed in the, the uh, 2026, 2027 timeframe. So we're just slightly ahead of that, but we are coordinating quite a bit. Um, you will see Metro Transit out in the corridor over the next couple of years talking about station locations and service and uh, um, amenities at the stations and, and how that would work. They will, they will run a full public process um, and it will be coordinated with this project as we're running this full pr public process as well. And you can see that at this time, these locations are not set in stone because as I mentioned, Metro Transit has to go through their process, but they're looking at potential ABRT stops at Rice and Sycamore, at Front, at Maryland, at Arlington and at Larpenter at this time, again, subject to uh, subject to them running through their process. And the next slide. Now, I want to point out if you go to our website, and we'll drop a we'll drop a link in the chat here. If you go to our website, we have a we have a, a project video that's been done, and it's 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 just been on there for a few days now. I suggest you you really take a look at that because it's it's a really good video of what this could look like in the future. Um, we were we were thinking about um, showing it here tonight. It's it's about six minutes long. We're thinking about showing it here tonight, um, but it's a it's it's such a big file that that trying to zoom it into all of your businesses, living rooms, wherever you are right now, um, it, it just doesn't work very well because of, because of bandwidth over the internet. So um, I would highly encourage you to, to go take a look at that video and, uh, and see how this could look. It's, it's a great visual. And next slide. I want to talk a little bit about implementation because there's a lot that has to happen between um, this point in time where we're at now where, where we've selected a concept and we intend to move forward. So next slide. So one of the things that we are very sure of is that road construction is disruptive. There's just no question about that. There's, there's no way to get around that. Um, so we've spent quite a bit of time on this, on this concept side, just thinking about what is the least disruptive way to, to build this project. So um, we do not intend to, to let the contractor go and, and uh, build all two miles of this at once, because we think that would be uh, probably the most disruptive. And so we anticipate doing it in stages at this time, and this could change because we're in the preliminary stages. At this time, we're, we're anticipating that if you think about breaking the, cons the, the corridor up into thirds, um, starting in the north end and moving south, we're anticipating that, it, that it's going to take about three years of construction to do that. And I'll talk a little bit about that in, in just a second. Um, so we, had, we're, we, we anticipate not doing it all at once in order to minimize those disruptions. Um, we understand businesses are greatly impacted by road construction, as are people who, who just normally travel along the corridor. Um, during this, this design process that is upcoming and during this construction project, there will be a lot of coordination and communication with neighbors and businesses, much like, much like what has happened to date. There'll be continual conversation and communication. Um, one of the biggest reasons that, it, that it's going to take a while out here is that utilities are really complicated and they take a lot of time to complete. Um, there's a lot going on underneath the ground. And uh, one of the things that, that uh, complicates this area is, is uh, we'll do a little inside baseball here. Um, the sanitary sewer line is fairly deep and it runs right down the middle of Rice Street. And um, because of that, that, that utility itself takes a lot of time. We anticipate asking everybody that owns property up and down this stretch of the corridor, um, whether or not they want to replace their, um, their service from their home out to the sewer, the sewer line in the middle of the street. And so what that entails is we have to dig into the street and we have to replace 
many of those lines. We hope we get to replace them all because that's a, that's a, that's something that should be done. So that's one of the, the biggest drivers of this construction schedule. It's not like we're working on the top four inches and, and we can be in and out in a year. We really have to, to rebuild this from the, uh, from the ground up. So what happens next is as we get into the design of this, we will get into those details. And, and here's, here's why. Because um, what we have so far is, is really a two-dimensional representation of this, of this uh, uh, roadway right now, this concept right now. So we've done we've done just a very little bit of engineering on that to, to assure ourselves that we can actually make this project work. What has to happen next is we have to get into the three dimensional design of it. We have to in the uh, in the jargon of the the engineers we have to we have to develop profiles and we have to cut cross sections and and understand how this is going to impact uh, properties at the right of way line and and so. Uh, so, so there's just so much engineering work that has to be done that future discussions will get into those details because that's the time to do that. Specific in pedestrian and crossing designs at specific intersections. I mentioned the transit service conversation will be happening along with Metro Transit. And then I mentioned the parking locations as well because that's incredibly important. We have a number of locations um, spotted out already where we believe we can cut parking um, bays into the into the flex zone and and recover some parking in that area and if you go to the next slide so i mentioned we anticipate the rest of this year and into 2020 and the and all of 2023 we'll complete that preliminary design get into that engineering and start the final design plans um, so that's the detailed design there will be stormwater uh, potential green infrastructure uh, conversations that will want to happen there. Um, and then the streetscaping conversation has yet to, to happen. So uh, that is what what do we want this this corridor to look like, to feel like? What kind of amenities do we want in this corridor? Mentioned earlier, we'll we'll touch on what happens to the the right of way line and and uh, what can we do to avoid property impacts, transit and integration again. And then uh, importantly, how how's it going to be staged and how it's going, how's it going to be funded? Um, the county is in the process of, of submitting right now for some regional funding that would that would fund a good portion of this. So so there's a there's a number of, of elements going on that that uh, parallel this process and, and uh, have to have to come along with it. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we anticipate construction 2024 through 2026, that three phase north to south um, piece. And there's one thing that I wanted to touch on um, here when we, when we say other implementation. Um, we have never viewed this uh, since we started working on it as just a roadway project, just a public works project. We've talked about everything um, that the community um, envisions that they would like to see happen out here. We're coordinating with uh, departments of health and economic development and public safety so that, so that we're bringing all of those other elements along. So we create a real um, a, a holistic look at holistic approach to the whole corridor. Again, not just public works. And then the next slide. This represents that. So the, the blue line at the bottom is, is kind of what I would call the the normal, the typical roadway process where we communicate, we would coordinate, we develop public works uh, recommendations on the roadway itself, the multimodal aspects as we have done. But at the top, you see these other fronts that, that we're working, working with other departments on at the city and the county level. Um, what is the land use out here today? What does it want to be in the future? Uh, what's the design look like? What's, what's development? what development is going to happen over time. Um, mentioned earlier, the public realm and placemaking, what's it look and feel like as we go through this, this process as, as we kind of transform that, uh, that roadway. Um, business and workforce development. Um, there's a lot going on here. How can, how can jobs be accommodated? How can businesses be accommodated out here? And then the public health and safety aspect of things. Um, and then the next slide, and we're just about to break out. Sessions. This is a, a representation of that. Um, 
So again, the traditional roadway construction process on the top, we've, uh, we've um, implemented this livability framework over the top of that. And we know that there are conversations that want to happen within that. Um, how do we support businesses during construction? How do we, how do we uh, accommodate access to businesses and homes during construction? So all of those things come along with this um, as we go through in a, in a little more, uh, a less traditional approach. And so with that, I'm going to pause. And um, uh, I noticed there was some, there was some chat going, or are these best handled in the, uh, in the breakout sessions? I haven't been able to keep up with them for, for those that have been keeping up with them. Um, we, could, we could answer a couple of those if, if those wanna be answered, or we could go to the breakout sessions and, and just simply have a conversation around them if, if we'd like. Isla, perspective there. I was gonna say, there's a, since people have been seeing these questions, I, I, we can go quickly through here and see if there's any that haven't been answered by somebody since, let's see, because they may have been sort of answered as we go. Um, <clears throat> it, does everyone okay, maybe you can, there's not that many. How about, how do you plan to keep the wayward pedestrians out of the way of the bicyclists in the mixed use portion of the path? Yeah, we've. Uh, I, I can take a swing at that. We uh, we've actually had a lot of conversation about that, and um, the, the bottom line is, for a shared use path, they are expected to mix. We we view this stretch as not like a a, a trail out in the wilderness. It's a, it's a in large part a commercial area. There's a lot of activity, and as such, we believe that uh, with with adequate signage, um, I don't know if whether we would look at it. It's some sort of a roadway or bikeway markings as well. Um, we anticipate that, that this would be a lower speed bike uh, and pedestrian friendly zone. Um, that's not to say everybody is good all the time, but, but we anticipate that, that it would be viewed as that. I was going to say, I'm scrolling down. There were several people who commented on that question. It was basically the same one. So I'll, I can save the more detailed conversation for that. The next one that's a little different is, will there be any protected intersections, Dutch intersections, to protect um, heads and bikes from cars turning right? Well, I'm going to have to admit, I do not know what a Dutch intersection is. Um, Cody, you're on. Thoughts there? Yeah, and I answered it in the in the chat as well. Um, <laughs> with the, the um, not having a, a dedicated bike lane on Rice Street plus the limited right of way uh, needed to kind of accommodate those uh, types of, of intersection corners. Uh, it's unlikely that we would have any of that along Rice Street. Um, however, where there are um, bike facility connections um, perpendicular to Rice Street, that can definitely be examined during the, the final design process, but um, I will leave it at that. Yeah, and, and a little bit of what Cody is alluding to there is, is um, we've been somewhat handcuffed all along because this is a very narrow roadway. It's a 66 foot right of way. And so we're trying to accommodate a, a, a lane of traffic in each direction, safety turn lanes, and then pedestrian and bicycle. So those are, it's, it's, it's just tight. It's been tight. It's, it's been so tight that that's been a constraint the, the whole time. Mm -hmm. So Let's uh, let's go to breakout sessions. And Nicole, you want to explain exactly how this is going to work? Yes. So I have a couple different rooms here. There will, will be three rooms and we'll have project staff in each room. So I will just hit the button and you should all just accept the room. And then these will take 20 minutes and they will automatically pull you back into the main session. So I will open these up now. Thanks, Nicole.
Everyone was just getting warmed up in our group. Yeah, geez. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can just ask now, Steve, as people are jumping in. Yeah, I'm just curious, who owns the land at the north, or I'm sorry, not the northwest, it'd be the southwest corner of Maryland and Rice? Because I saw you have, like, I mean, the two bus stops are marked there, but I know it's a vacant lot today. Yes, um, I believe that is partially, it's city-owned property. Okay. Yes, and then the North End Neighborhood Organization, D6, uh, put a garden in there just mm -hmm. until something else comes around. Okay. But it's just like a rain garden there for now. Sure. Mr. Singer, is that a hand up? Yeah, I had a, I had a question or just like a, a point, um, which is I think on the current design of the street, for the most part, your pedestrian refuge medians, the, the speeds of vehicles will be greatly reduced and uh, the pedestrian refuge medians will be fairly safe. But um, there are places on four to three streets, for example, West 7th Street in front of Mississippi Market or uh, the new um, pedestrian refuge median at Jefferson at Aid Mill Road, where that median routinely gets hit by vehicles. And uh, there seems to be a policy, I'm not sure whether it comes from MnDOT and the state highway manual or if it comes at the local level, but uh, of designing medians where there is no longer even a curb on the front nose end, um, but right. it's more of a ramp. And I guess this is for snow removal or what have you. But um, at certain spots like Ivy, for example, where you're going to have vehicles coming over that bridge at a higher speed, um, I would urge you all to think about putting in uh, steel bollards or something to like actually physically protect pedestrians who are in those meetings. Um, and I, you know, I, I would suggest that citywide, not just, you know, right. one project. I, I think, um, like I say, on most of this project, the sight lines are pretty good. And I think you're constricting the roadway down far enough that that people are not going to be speeding as much. But um, anyway, that's a uh, that's one point. Thanks. Yeah, it's a fair point. And, and I know you brought that up before, Andy. That's a, that's a good point. Brian, did you have something to add there? No, the added, definitely be looking at, you know, um, you know, one that part of the thing is making those medians a little bit longer so we don't have people jumping up on the, the ends of those. But you're right. I mean, that's the way MnDOT has been designing those again for, again, snowplow operations. So their snowplows don't hit a blunt um, you know, six inch curb, because that'll end up wrecking the truck and the uh, um, everything else that they're doing. So that is why that is partially why and make sure that they can clear off the pedestrians with the same plows that they're using. Um, but this is a, is a more of a local um, route, you know, so there are different things that have Ramsey County and the city of St. Paul will be looking at. Great. Thanks, Brian. Um, here's what I'd like to do, just kind of keeping an eye on the clock and, and respecting everybody's time. Um, I've got just, uh, and Carrie, I see your hand up. I'll, I'll come back to you in just a second. Um, I've got just a couple more slides, so I'm going to take Carrie's question and, and then do just a quick report out, in like two minutes from each of the groups on what, what was, uh, what was uh, discussed there. And then I've got two just quick next step slides, and and we'll we'll be we'll be done there, and people can go about their business. We will hang on um, for a while if people want to talk and engage. We'll we'll be here for that. So, Carrie, did you want to ask your question? Yeah, um, I just wanted to know. I didn't get a chance to ask this question in breakout, but I saw on the map that you're going to be closing the bus stop on Litchfield. And keeping the one on hat on Milford, am I correct? Um, Cody, do you know about those uh, local bus stops? Give me one second to look at the map. Okay, tell you what, we will go ahead and, and do the report outs. Cody, you go ahead and do that. I'll do the report out for our group while you're while you're looking at that. We'll come back with uh, with your question. So that group number one, we had a we had a good conversation. We we talked a little bit about uh, uh, workforce development because John O'Fallon was in the room and from Ramsey County, and we talked about um, you know what what the county and and what our company does for for working with small businesses um, on the contracting side. Talked about making sure. Oops, you're you're unmuted there, Carrie. And uh, thanks. And. Uh, 
we talked about on the contracting side, how, how do you encourage small businesses to participate in, in work like this? Um, we talked a little bit about the construction and the, the sewer service um, and how that might happen. Um, one person was was pleased with the design, thought it thought it really would would slow traffic down, make it a little bit more livable out there. We had a conversation about bus pullouts that we could talk about a little bit uh, in, in the future if, if people have questions about that. Um, but the, the short answer is um, arterial bus rapid transit buses do not pull out. They stop in lane. Um, they're designed to, to take people on and off quickly and they keep moving. There are a couple of pullouts in there for some of the remaining local service, which will be fairly infrequent. Um, and there are a couple of locations where we just simply could not fit it in the 66 foot right away. Um, conversation about the, uh, the, the shared use aspect of the trail and the mixing of pedestrians and, and bicycles. It, it doesn't feel like it will work well as a, as a commuter type route. So this writer may look for other um, options to, to ride that. And, and uh, let's see. And we talked a little bit about speed and uh, how this, this design will likely start to slow things down a little bit. Um, did I miss anything there, Cody? Uh, did you touch on the sewer? I, don't know, I was looking at the map. Uh, yeah, touched on it. Didn't, didn't okay. get into detail, but, but we did talk a little bit about the sewer lines. Perfect. No, uh, I don't, I don't have anything else to add. Okay, I was thanks. Say, Scott, do you want to talk a little bit about, and, and um, maybe I'm putting you too much on the spot, about ABRT? Um, again, it's very early on um, in the process, but mm -hmm. kind of how they function and with lights. And, um, you know, when you say in lane, I think that that sometimes scares a lot of people right. um, and thinking about backups, but that they're designed in a way that um, now I'm leading you down the path. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I can uh, take a take a shot at that for sure. Um, ABRT, like the G line, is designed to operate kind of mimic the light rail style of service. So you purchase tickets offline. There's a, there's a ticketing kiosk at the bus stop itself. You are required to have a ticket before you get on the bus or do your go pass or or whatever. Um, so what the buses do is, is they're designed to go quickly. So they pull up, they stop, the door is open, people get off, people get on, and the door is shut and it moves on. So it's designed to, to do that maneuver in a matter of seconds, not minutes. And so they are literally designed to operate in the lane. And, um, and I know, I was going to say, I know they op try to optimize that if you're going in a light, how the, the timing of lights so they usually try to go far, far through the intersection. The bus would Correct. go through the intersection. The light would turn red. So the, there's a mechanism on the bus um, with timing. Is that correct? Um, that we will be discussing that. What you're talking about is called transit priority. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is, I believe that's fairly common on ABRT lines. I, I guess I can't speak for Metro Transit, whether we would have that on, on this slide or not, but essentially what that does is if you think about a normal um, red light timing signal, if it detects a bus coming, it may extend that cycle by a few seconds so that the bus can, can make it through. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't change the light, but it extends the, the length of time. Is that a fair assessment, Brian? Okay, right, thanks. That is correct. Yep. Yeah, so recognize that a bus is coming and it will, will extend the green instead of letting them stop at the, at the, at the red, red yep. light. All right, group number two, who's reporting out there? That's either myself or Alyssa. I'll let Alyssa and then I'll fill yeah. in if there's anything left. Yeah, we had a, we had a, 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 a great group. I think you, everyone brought a, along um, uh, great responses and um, feel like uh, uh, I think most of the people were longer term residents. So that's, that's beautiful to see. And some people joining us for the first time. Um, I think there were, there's some, there was a little bit of concern about providing um, uh, the section north of the Capitol, like for the type of biker that at, at that point, that biker might be more of that speed biker. And they, you know, may know to to detour off uh, rice, 
when it gets to a certain point, but maybe helping provide some flexibility in what, what the approach is there for um, bikers and, and pedestrians. Um, and um, we talked with Melissa, who's a biker, um, and, and she works in the area, and she was um, kind of following from a distance, following this project, because she doesn't necessarily live in the neighborhood, but um, is, has been kind of observing this as it's been going along. Um, and uh, Carrie mentioned um, kind of the concern, uh, concern for safety and, and the health of the community, and particularly elders and those who um, who have different different physical abilities and being able to have that, uh, recognizing that having that room um, to roll um, in, in, uh, or, and or walk in, in whatever capacity and not necessarily depend on metro mobility to get from point A to point B. Um, and then uh, we talked a lot about the Rice in Ivy intersection um, and that, that left, left turn out of La Chique's um, maybe uh, of being of some concern, but uh, I think uh, Brian um, pointed out that it, we, we wanted to try to make that move and thought that was the that was probably the wiser move than allowing people to come out to the right and make a U-turn in the middle of Rice Street. Um, so, um, and and I think Karen appreciated the amount, the, the turn lanes. I think we talked a little bit about left turn lights um, in that discussion as well. Um, and then, um, oh boy, my, my note just went really left there. Um, Brad, you made a comment and I wrote, oh, that you're Ramsey County staff and you do a traffic engineering. There you go. <laughs> I remembered. So I covered everybody um, at least a little bit. So I'll let Brian add to that. No, I mean, you covered everything. Um, yeah, just looking at the, the advantages of the three lane roadway and the medians and everybody brought that up. And I think just to answer uh, uh, Carrie's question, yes. Um, so the the there is no there is still a bus stop between Front and Litchfield, so there'll still be a stop kind of in between that block between Rich, Litchfield and and Front. So that still be, will be maintained. It may not be in the exact same location it is today, but there'll still be one be just north of Litchfield. So that'll still be maintained. That is shown on the layout. Thanks, Brian. Uh, last group. Big thumbs up from Curry. I could take a swing at that and let Nick fill in anything I miss. Um, <clears throat> group three, um, great discussion as well. Um, plus a, a really cute puppy, just for good measure. Um, we talked about a, a number of different topics. I'll run through them pretty quick. Um, really good discussion about emergency services on the corridor, about the placement of the fire station and first responders relative to the corridor's needs and about ensuring that um, as that, that's been thought through very thoroughly in terms of how does an emergency vehicle successfully navigate up and down the corridor at all times of the day, especially with medians and other obstructions. So um, I think we got, had general discussion and then of course realizing that'll get much more in detail in the next phase of design in terms of that and troubleshooting around um, making sure that there's, there's still safe access. Um, there were some comments about making sure that understanding what the, the pedestrian and bike path was and just maybe a note of clarification that uh, in case anyone else was confused, I think, I think Scott, you talked, we talked about the different services of the, of the ped bike, the um, multi-use trail. It will be a paved surface. It's, it'll be either asphalt or concrete. We don't know yet. So just making sure that was clear. Um, um, good discussion about parking and um, different perspectives on that. I'm certainly a conversation we expect to continue to have, um, called out the fact that there is some potential parking zones identified on, in the video and on the, on the visuals on the website so people can sort of see where that's being considered. Lots of discussion to be had, especially in the certain portions of the corridor where businesses rely on that and also need to be made in context of parking out there now. Um, questions about enhanced pedestrian crossings, and signals, um, and that, that those will be identified as, as key locations for where those could be installed along the corridor. Um, for, where enhanced crossing is needed. Um, yeah, discussion about that north of this segment, there'll be additional um, work in a future phase um, up towards County B and to the adjacent um, suburban neighborhood uh, communities um, of extension um, post this phase. And that, that there has been some initial conversations about that, though that's, that's still um, not part of the construction of this project. Um, 
a kudos for the video and I, I would encourage everyone to look at it. It's it gives you a a, a eye a level eye view of what it's like to be in the, in the space and give you a better sense of how this could be um, when it's finished. Um, and then just some questions about um, properties along the corridor and about the future repositioning of properties for parking or for development or what have you. Um, and again, as our implementation plan discussed, the idea is we're having this conversation so that the right people can be thinking about that and supporting positive change where appropriate on the corridor to complement what happens here. So uh, anything I missed, Nick? I think you got it all, Hila. Great. Well, thanks. Quickly, so. quickly Scott, I, I raised my hand because immediately as soon as Hila spoke, I remembered that uh, Melissa and I were having a whole conversation uh, via the chat, and uh, she asked a little bit about um, kind of the area south and and kind of expressed some frustration about the what was is not a very desirable um, biking walking situation there. And so um, so that is just I just to recognize and uh, respectful frustration. And uh, <laughs> as she just said, um, and and mentioned that. Um, you know, I, I said this was just kind of it was out of the scope and actually just out of our project area, but that hopefully we leave we leave good mark here for that that work to continue down that way. Um, so, so Nick, do you want to touch on just the south and the north side of this project? Because you're right, this we don't do the whole of Rice Street with this project. Yep. Uh, Rice Street is one of the few county roads that go almost from south to north through the whole county. Um, we're hoping that once we do this section, um, we do have a plan to go north. So from Wheelock to County Road B uh, after this one is constructed. And then um, we would like to also go south. So basically from Pennsylvania to University at the end of that second phase. So after County Road B. So that's, I don't know, five, six years from now, I'm, I've lost track of my time, but uh, we're hoping people like this so much they ask for it on even more roads, you know, Dale Street, you know, more Maryland's, more uh, Larpenders and that kind of thing. So the kind of using this uh, to instigate more projects in the area. Thanks, Nick. Can I also tag on and say, we, we um, also met with, a, for those of you who know the Capital Area Planning Board, which is sort of a, a big anchoring presence around the Capital Area on the south, southern end of Rice Street and has a relationship to the Sears site redevelopment. We did talk with them a couple of times during the process as well, just to understand where the planning and discussion were going in those areas. And as Nick's pointed out, it's earlier on, but certainly hearing from them and thinking about how the, this project can tie in on that end and how those community conversations can continue um, so that it's laying the groundwork as they're planning on other aspects down there that it matches up well and, and fits in with the larger linkage between this portion of the corridor and the downtown and capital area. So that's that's been part of the conversation as well um, at, on both ends of the corridor. Thanks, Anna. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide. I've got two very short slides. Um, so next steps for, for us with this process, we are almost done. So we're finalizing that implementation plan. And then at that point, we will have that roadway and livability framework um, to, to move forward with this. Um, within the next phases, there will be additional engagement, additional reporting out of, uh, of conversations on this. So the county is committed to, to keeping that engagement, engagement going. And so then over the next couple of months, we will move into that implementation phase. So the next stage of that is really beginning that engineering design. Um, yet this spring and in 2022, the county will be, will be doing that. And then the next slide. Um, just a reminder, please engage online. We have a lot of resources there. Um, we've got, we will be putting this presentation um, online. We've got more information, cross sections and videos. Um, the, the big video we talked about there, online feedback forms. Um, and just again, these will continue to happen through that design and, and construction phase. So uh, please feel free to continue to engage online. Thank you for the link, Isla. Uh, it's right there for everybody if you want to copy that. And then I believe that is it for the, the formal portion of this. So again, respecting people's time, you're, you're welcome to, to go on your way and, and get on with your evening. Um, we are hanging 
back here. So, so if people have additional questions, we're, we're, we'd be uh, we'd be happy to to engage with people can uh, further. And we see Craig's comment in there about the the Vento Phase One extension. Thanks, Craig. So feel free to uh, chime in if you have additional questions. Um, we'd be happy to happy to answer whatever we can. Well, thank thank you for this. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Thanks for coming. Peace. Um, I'd like to, if there's any uh, consideration, I know that uh, you said that this wouldn't be mainly a commuter route for bicyclists, but I mean, it is a straight shot down to the capital. So I think that there's going to be a lot more bicyclists using this. So if there's not going to be a uh, dedicated bike thing or is there any consideration of like putting up some signs like slower traffic to the right or maybe even just spray painting out at busy sections like uh, pedestrians to one side bicyclists to the other just something simple like that yeah we, we actually have had exactly those conversations um and so it's probably a misnomer to say this this isn't and i said this this is not a commuter route because of course it is a person can commute down this it is a it is a legal bikeway um it's just shared with pedestrians so so it is legal to do that people who want to commute down there um certainly can um i was trying to get at there are certain segments of this corridor that will feel uh you know a little crowded a little little more activity um business areas things like that and and so to your point that you just made was that nathaniel um to to the point you just made we we have had conversations about exploring some signage or you know, you know, pavement color, something that would alert cyclists that that they are in a, in a tighter zone, a, a more pedestrian active zone. Um, so those conversations have yet to happen as we as we design this. We'll really get down to the detail of of how these operate and, and what we can do um, to make it safe for everybody there. Um, you know, because we've we've taught we thought about things like businesses that are tight there doors swinging out into it i mean there's there's just a lot of a lot to think about there on a block by block basis great questions though i see esther asks about property taxes for small businesses on rice um, one of the things we've we've had conversations about in this livability framework that that everybody I think is is uh, is uh, is concerned about is is how do public works projects like this affect property values? We don't know the answer to that, um, but the the hope is that we make this a place that's really vibrant and uh, really works for for all modes of traffic, works for all people um, that live in the area that want to visit the area. Um, so, so we, we, we really want to make this a vibrant area. Um, we are, we are concerned about, you know, that element of displacement and, and how does that, how does that, uh, what happens to people that actually live there in that, uh, in that space and have homes there. And, and as I recall, you, uh, you just invested in a home there. What, what does that mean for you? I don't have an answer for that, but, but that is a top of mind for the county, for the city as we work through this. Um, so that's a great question. I had a uh, suggestion for uh, probably a year or two from now and beyond is once construction starts, I know often I might be driving through an area and I see some digging or whatever going on and a bunch of activity or something and I'm kind of curious what's going on and there's just no way to stop to see what they're doing and if you look on the website it just says road work uh, being able to have the website to actually give a little bit more detail about moving utilities or moving telephone or fixing water or something like that would be helpful just for people who just kind of curious what's work, what's going on in various parts of the construction project that that is a good comment because uh, a lot of people will see us dig a hole one day, 
and uh, we're putting in water main that day. And then the next day we're digging another, the same hole and we're putting a sewer service the next day and then Excel Energy comes in and they put in a power line buried in the same hole and they go, why are you digging three different holes in three different days? And it is a good comment to figure out, well, what are we doing out there? So it's, it's good to know. Yeah, and it's one of those things that's really hard when you're driving by in a car and you see a construction site that's been going on for a couple of days, you kind of wonder, what's going on? And then you look and there's, you don't have any way to stop and ask. Yeah, so uh, Jim, I would say that I think we're getting better and better at that over time. And and uh, one person on this call, Nicole, who's our wizard behind the, the screen here, um, spends a lot of her time with construction projects and communication associated with that. Um, so I, I would hope we get better and better and, and we have avenues. We have, uh, you know, I've seen weekly updates um, coming out from, from contractors. You know, here's what we did this week. Here's what we're doing next week. There are a lot of avenues to be able to get information out like that. And, and so hopefully we're getting better at that. And John, you got a hand up? Yeah, kind of to go with that whole communication thing. I know on the you know, Dale Street Bridge project, we, you know, we had it was easy because it was you know one area, so you could have uh, two cameras up and public could go up and twenty four seven. It was always live. This one's a little bit more spread out, but um, but it is a good idea to think about how how we could you know maybe place a two or three of them that are more a little more strategic of uh, maybe uh, the areas that are more concerned or something you, you, you could do something like that uh, the, the southwest light rail as well does uh, um, does some pretty good work on that I'm on the workforce DB committee on that and um, they, they do a lot of uh, communications that way that's pretty helpful so j just an idea yep, thanks Joe good coming yeah that's a good idea John Any other questions before we sign off? You know, and as, as questions come up, you know, we noted that we've got the, the online resources. You can fire questions at us there if you'd like. Um, we're not hard to find. I think Nick's probably phone number and uh, uh, email address is sitting right there online. And, and uh, feel free to, to get a hold of us with, with any specific questions. We'll answer whatever we can, whenever we can. Thanks, John. Well, hearing hearing no comments, um, we'll be happy to end it and, and folks can, can get on with their evening. Thanks for attending everyone. We really right. appreciate it. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.